Hi everyone and welcome back to C++ Crash Course. I'm Nick and today we're going to be going over nested, uh, nested control. So we've looked at if statements, else statements, switch statements, and we've looked at uh, for loops, while loops, and do while loops. Now uh, the concept we're going to get into today is the idea that we can kind of mash these things together. So we don't just have to do a for loop. We can have a for loop that has, you know, control flow inside of it, so nested control. And we'll go ahead and open up our example. In this case, it will be the CF nested.cpp, standing for control flow nested. So let's go ahead and open that up. And we see we've got the same uh, setup that we had for all our other looping examples, which is this uh, multiplication by successive addition, this five times 10 example. Now, in this case, what we're doing is we have the same for loop that we had previously, but instead of just having you know this plus equals inside of the for loop and then a print, this time we'll have the, an if statement embedded within the for loop. So this if statement will say, okay, if this i, so remember i is this looping variable, so we initialize i in the for loop, uh, set it equal to zero, we test the condition every single iteration if i is less than the multiplier. And then at the end of every iteration, we increment it by one. So when we do plus plus, we increment it by one. Uh, now, just as kind of a brief aside, this doesn't just have to be you know i plus plus. We could say i is equal to i plus one, or we could do some other number, i is equal to i plus five if we wanted to. Uh, in this case though, uh, it makes sense to just increment it by one in order to get our correct result uh, because we want to do this 10 times. So we don't want to uh, increase it by two because then we get half the number of iterations that we want. Now, inside of this for loop, this time we're going to check if i is equal to four. So this should only happen once inside of the for loop because remember it it monot the i monotonically increases, meaning that it's always either a single value or a, uh, it will always be either flat or increasing in value. So i never decreases, it will just go from zero up to nine in this case uh, before it fails this multiplier condition. And then in every other case, we call this continue statement. And all continue says is uh, if I hit a continue, ignore everything else in the loop, just start doing the next loop iteration immediately. So in this case, let's see what happens uh, when i is not equal to four. So when i is not equal to four, we of course, because it's not in any control uh, blocks, we'll always execute this product plus equals multiple canned. Then on the fifth iteration, so zero, one, two, three, four, we'll execute this if statement. So we'll print out what iteration it is. So it should be four here. And then we should print out the product at that time. And then we won't execute the else because remember when we do things like if else, if one of the conditions is true, we execute that and we ignore all the others. And then because this is just at the very end, we should print out this is printed only on iteration i, so it should be four again in this case. Now let's think about all the other cases, right? So when i is not equal to four, so it's zero, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now in that case, it will hit this else statement and it will hit this continue statement. Now when it hits a continue statement, we blow past this print down here, we ignore it completely, and we immediately just start uh, our next iteration of the loop. So what should print out here? We of course should print out this before loop, product is equal to zero. We should print out on the fifth iteration, where i is equal to four, we should print out this iteration and product. On that same iteration, we'll print out what's down here this uh, the statement that says this is only printed on iteration, in this case, four. And then, of course, we'll print out what's after the for loop. It has you know, no control structures that 
There's no if or else statements that prevent this from executing. So we'll always print out the product at the end. So let's go ahead and compile this and run it and see what we get. So as always, we're going to use G++. This time the file is CF nested CPP. So for nested control structures. Uh, oops. So we're actually going to call the output file, the executable CF nested and we'll input CF nested.cpp. So we did a good job. So no errors. That green highlighted, that will be our executable. We'll go ahead and run it and see if we guessed correctly. So the two that we knew would always execute did this before loop and product. And we saw that the only time that those two statements executed was on iteration four. The product is 25, which makes sense because it's the fifth iteration. So uh, remember, so there's iteration zero, one, two, three, four. So uh, from the variable standpoint, it's four because it's counting zero as an iteration. Uh, so that's halfway. Remember, we're doing five times 10. So that so our product is half of five times 10, which is 25. And then at the very end, of course, we did it correctly. All we did was add some conditionals for printing. So our product is correct. And then, like we said, the continue statement prints anyone else from printing this line. This, this is only printed on the fourth iteration. Uh, and so that's kind of the basics of nested uh, flow control. Now, it's important to uh, realize this could be any other type of looping construct. So we could have uh, a while loop here, a do while loop, it doesn't matter. We can nest these things together. In fact, I could have a for loop and then inside of the for loop, I could have a while loop. Inside of that while loop, I could have another for loop or another while loop or a do while loop or if statements and else statements. We can kind of just nest these things together as we need them. So in this case, we just did a very simple example, but you know, this can be you know, blown up and expanded to anything that we want. So this is just kind of showing there's many ways to solve a problem. It's important to just do, you know, uh, initially it's whatever works, right? So you just care about functional correctness. Later on, we'll discuss uh, things like performance and how we can improve performance of things like loops. Okay, so that is going to do it for this video. As always, if we go online to the GitHub page for Coffee Before Arch. So let's go to github.com Coffee Before Arch. Oh, and it's a little slow today. Uh, I'm running this on a virtual machine. So this is on a Windows machine, but I'm using VirtualBox to uh, have a Linux environment. For some reason, the internet seems to go a lot slower on this. There we go. So if we go to C++ Crash Course, and we look at this readme down here. So we'll have all the videos that we do uh, with links on the left, all the files that are used in the videos on the right. And in this one, we did uh, control flow nested this file. So if you click on it, it'll take us right to our example code. Feel free to download it and play around with it on your own time. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.